Welcome to God Powered. Now, as you know, we've been in a the short series, Promotion Through Adversity. And we'll pick that up again next week. But for the moment, we're going to take just a brief pause because I, this is by special request. I've heard from a number of you. And so today's video is by special request. Now, obviously, we are living in, I mean, this could be the beginning of an apocalypse movie. It's so crazy, right? So there's pandemic, there is fear and uncertainty all over the world, crazy stock market gyrations, government uh, vacillation on how to best respond. And so for you and I, what does all of this mean? And so I think the best way for us to understand it is to take a look at where we stand in God's timeline. And as we do, all of a sudden, I think not only will this make sense, we'll see specific responses from us and, and there's some hope in this. See, the world is trying to figure out how to get back to normal. But you and I, we have a cheat sheet. We've got the Bible that tells us, see, Jesus already said this was going to happen. So in Matthew 24, the disciples, the boys, they go to Jesus and they ask a really profound question. The question was, what will be the signs of the time? In other words, when Jesus is coming back, what's it going to look like? Now, the response they got, I don't think is what they expected, and I'm sure it's not what we expected. And so Jesus said, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't be concerned. These things must happen, and it is not yet. And he goes on, and he talks about earthquakes, famines, pestilence in very places. He goes on and talks about challenges, and then he says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. Now, this can feel like, gosh, scary, and, and to endure to the end, it's like the less man standing. We've got to find a way to survive. We need to stockpile food or whatever. Let's take a different look at it. So we can really understand this. Let's take a different look. And, and to give you an idea, picture a top. Remember the little kid's toy, and you pull the string, and as it, when it's got lots of energy, it spins and it moves smoothly around. But then, as the energy starts to wind down, it starts to become more and more unstable. It wobbles. And it'll wobble, but then it'll right itself. And then it'll wobble again, and it'll right itself. And it goes on until the wobbles just get out of control. And we need to understand that, because when we talk about getting back to normal, we will get through, there is a promise, and we will get through this crisis. And we'll have a new form of stability. But I don't like the term, get back to normal. If we look at, look at 2008, the financial crisis, sure, we got back through it, we got through it, we got to stability, but the no, it's a new normal. Things are not quite the same as they were before, but they're, we've had stability. So let's break this down and see what's our response. So when he's talking about wars and rumors of war, earthquakes, pestilence, these are the wobbles. This is the volatility. And, and really, haven't we seen this not just now, but for years? Some of us are old enough to say way back when. Look at how much more volatile the weather is these days. How volatile politics are. Econ everything. Why? Because Jesus said everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And this will continue to happen because Jesus is saying to the world, I'm the only foundation you can build your life on. Now, instead of responding in fear, though, I want, I want to look at, there's a couple of responses and there's, promise and hope for you and I. And, and so when he says wars and rumors, well, remember he said, don't be concerned. That's, different translations say a different way. Don't be troubled. Don't be worried. But when you look it up in the original, what it says is, see that you are not worried. See that you're not troubled. And that word see is an active word. In other words, this is not a just don't worry about it. This is not a passive response. It's an active. We have to take an active response. And that word is an active word. We need to make every effort to not be troubled. Now, this is challenging. We live in a time where we are bombarded with news. Some new or some accurate, some fake. But we're bombarded with news, correct? Internet, social media, it's you can't get away from it. But we have to make that active, make every effort not to be troubled. And we need to help others take that active, not going to be troubled approach. And there'll be more wobbles. We will get, how do we, how can I tell you, I know we're going to get through this crisis. 
because he says the end is not yet. There's more happening and we'll get to that. So we'll get through this crisis and we'll achieve a new stability. But there'll be another wobble coming down the road. And so, you know, as opposed to like on some of these TV shows, prepping and stockpiling food and having a bunker to live in, that's not how God calls us to respond. Jesus is saying, look, I've got your life in my hand. See that you're not troubled. Make every effort not to be troubled. And these wobbles are going to happen and there are going to be other challenges come along. And it says, but he who endures to the end will be saved. And as I mentioned, that enduring to the end feels so much like, oh, we got to find a way to survive and be the last man standing and we'll be saved. And that's not it at all. That's not the intention. The focus is he who endures to the end. Those that stay in love with Jesus, he, those that keep their focus on Jesus will be saved. Now, you would think with the wobbles and with the uncertainty, now some people's eyes will be open. We'll come to that in a second. But unfortunately, we're going to see that the love of many will grow cold. It talks about, Jesus says, some are going to be offended. And in some, the love of many will grow cold because of sin around them. And I said, again, you would think that in this kind of wobble that you people would cling to Jesus tighter. But I won't mention any names, but I remember, some of you will remember Y2K. Remember how this was going to be the end of the world. I mean, the power grid was going to shut down. Everything's going to, society is going to collapse. And I was giving a talk and this couple, and they had really bought this. And they really, truly believed that this was going to be God's judgment. And they had stockpiled food. They had a place out in the wilderness and they were going to go survive the meltdown, so to speak. And the tragedy in this was that when the meltdown didn't happen, they were disappointed their, their expectations of how God was going to respond weren't met. And because their expectations weren't met, they were offended and they quit serving God. And we're in danger of that. We all are. We think we know how God's going to respond. And so the danger, the danger is not the wobbles we're going through. Again, God said, the end is not yet. We need to see that we're not troubled. And the danger is getting distracted, that the news and the things we hear distract us from loving Jesus and loving the world around it. Because it goes on, it says, in the gospel, the good news of the love of Jesus Christ will be shared all over the world. So remember, God has you in the palm of his hand. He's got me in the palm of his hand. The thing to be afraid of is not the wobbles. Now, yes, should we? We are the church. Are there practical responses? Yes, we should be protecting the vulnerable. We should be helping the hurt and the needy. But more importantly, we should be loving and proclaiming the love of Jesus Christ. And the wobbles. We'll see stability again and then we'll see another wobble. See that. Make every effort that you're not troubled. I'm Randy Gladden. We'll be back next week.